Okay, the thermometer from Excel moments. This one should be quick. It's a solution to a question I was asked on my YouTube channel. Yeah, this channel, Excel moments. Okay, so what's the question? Person needed a dynamic solution to inserting rows at every point. There was a change in the name, English. Now let's look at what I mean. So it means that whenever there's a change in name in this data set here, so like where John switches to James, you want the blank row insert. Or you want this to be dynamic, okay? So now you have James, then it switches to John. That's why you have a blank, okay? And it's so dynamic that you can add, you know, another data set here, and you can see that it's added to the expanded column. How did I achieve this? Very simple, just a few functions. VStack, which is a function most of you know, reduce, one of my favorites, offset, the one that should never be used, but will be used here, and expand. Okay, so let me just show you the expand, first of all, just to create, you know, set the tone for the formula. So I'll do an expand. If you expand this cell, for example, or this array, and you say you want to expand it to two rows, meaning it's one row right now, it's going to become two rows. You can skip the columns argument. Add width, meaning that for the expanded rows, what do you want to see in there? If I say I want to see nothing, right? This is what I get. So VStack has become VStack and, you know, a blank. Okay, I could have said I wanted it to be three rows. And, you know, I have something like this. This is the fundamental idea. So we are going to use the expand. So wherever there is a switch, like here, John to James, we would expand John so that it becomes John and a blank. Or wherever there isn't a switch, we just keep John as is. That's really the idea. Let me show you how it works simply. First, then I just modify it to give us, you know, the solution. So here I can start off with the reduce and, you know, I just put here, nothing. I could use the first value as my initial value, but it's okay. I would use, you know, more or less like uh, blank. And then for my array, because I want to look through every row in this data set, I select, you know, every row in the table, pretty much size the headers. And I go into the Lambda portion. Okay, and I have two variables, the accumulator and the iterator. And now I go into the calculation part. The calculation portion is basically saying, what do you want to do? I want to stack up A, which is the accumulator, which starts off, its first value will be the blank, and then it keeps you know, aggregating and so on. The B here is going to loop through every element in this array, meaning that B will start off with John, the next value will be John, the next value will be John and James and so on. Basically, I'm doing a stack of A and B. The only thing that will change here is that there will be a blank row at the very top because of the initial value. Okay? Now, you see that. Okay? So, it's very close to what we need. The only thing we are going to do here to modify is that we need to include an if, a conditional, in the B portion so that we can test, you know, whether the cell we are in is the same as the cell offset by one row or not. And depending on what it is, we will either expand or choose not to expand. Let me get rid of these guys so they're out of our way. So I'm just going to modify this formula slightly. So maybe I'm just going to take this down, expand the formula bar. So what I'm going to do is that in the B portion, I'm going to do an if here. And I'm going to say if B, B take B as the cell you're in, right? If B is not equal to the cell that is offset of B by one row, meaning that if B is not equal to the cell just beneath it, right? What do you want? It means there's a change at that point. There's a change in name. That's why they're not equal. So you need to do an expand. So at that point, you're going to expand B, which is the cell you're in. You're going to expand it to two rows and you're going to pad it to the blank. That's how you create, you know, that blank cell. Okay. Then in a the case, which is the value E falls where they are the same. Where they are the same, you just retain the value as is. You're not doing anything. And the value there is the P. That's basically it. So you close the brackets here. If you close on the V stack, you close on the lambda, and you close on the reduce. Okay? And you have, you know, your solution. The only thing you need to do here is, first of all, you have that blank row at the top that you want to get rid of. Okay? So you can then do a drop, right? And at the end, you do comma one. So that drops the first row. Uh, you see that that's fine. The bottom part, you can choose what you want. Do you want to have a blank at the very end of Louise because it's actually switching to nothing or you, know, you want to clip it? So if you don't want to see a blank there, you could also do another drop anyway. <laughs> you know, and now you're dropping from the bottom. So you're doing a minus one. Okay, right. And you have a dynamic solution. So if you add a name here, you know, King, 
Okay, you can see it added. If you take out these two and it expands and it contracts accordingly. Very simple. In the next video, I'm going to do this with a two dimensional array, meaning a table with multiple rows and multiple columns, obviously. The fundamental idea is not going to change, but it's a little more evolving. But once you understand this, you'll be able to apply it in the next one. So I hope you like this video. Please do hit the like button. You can also subscribe to the channel Excel Moments. For now, I'm out.